Fifty plus free real estate practice exam questions. Two thousand and twenty-two. This free practice exam is here to help you master the national portion of the real estate exam. Our real estate practice exam pulls from a large pool of questions, so you can expect a different study experience each time you take it. Don't forget to read the explanations so you fully understand the question. At the very end of each exam, there is a recap of the questions you got right or wrong, which is also very helpful to look at. Question one: What is the key difference between a less than freehold estate and a freehold estate? Is a money, b rights, c time. D location. Answer C. Estates can be divided into two different sections: freehold estates and less than freehold estates, or leasehold estates. The key difference between a leasehold estate and a freehold estate is the limitation of time. A freehold estate is an estate in which you have exclusive right to enjoy the possession of a property for an undefined length of time, while a leasehold estate is an estate held by one who rents or leases property for a period of time. Question two. After paying off a loan, the lender files what to lease the land: a disclosure agreement, b satisfaction of mortgage, c mortgage disposal form, d release of mortgage form (R O M F). Answer b. A satisfaction of mortgage is a document that confirms a mortgage has been paid off and details the provisions for the transfer of collateral title rights. Question three: Which of the following best describes a balloon payment? A. A package mortgage. B. A small monthly payment. C. A variable mortgage cost. D. A large payment during the term or at the end of the payment schedule. Answer D. A balloon loan is a mortgage which does not fully amortize over the term. Amortization is when payments divide into equal amounts for the duration of the loan. A balloon loan is different as not all payments are the equally divided, and the most substantial payments are called balloon payments. Question four: Which of these meets the Department of Housing and Urban Development's definition of family as a protected class? A. Two twin brothers in their thirties. B. A sixty-two-year-old man with his fifty-year-old wife. C. A single parent with a foster child age eleven and a son age eighteen. D. A married couple with an elderly parent over the age of fifty. Answer C. The answer is a single parent with a foster child age eleven and a son age nineteen. Familial status is defined as one or more individuals younger than eighteen living with a parent or guardian. It also includes pregnant women and anyone who is in the process of assuming custody of a child younger than eighteen. Question five. Mrs. Jackson signs an open listing on her home with three different brokers. In this case, a each broker has an opportunity to own the entire commission. B the owner must pay a full commission to all three brokers if it sells. C the owner must pay the first broker to take the listing when it sells. D. The brokers will split the commission three ways, regardless of who sells it.
Answer A. Remember, an open listing is truly open. Each broker has an opportunity to earn the entire commission if they can come up with a buyer. Question six: Antitrust laws prohibit competing brokers from all of the following except: a. boycotting other brokers in the marketplace; b. dividing the market to restrict competition. C. Agreeing to set sales commissions and management rates. D. Receiving compensation from both the buyer and the seller. Answer D. Receiving compensation from both the buyer and the seller is not an antitrust violation. Deal agency is when one real estate agent represents both the buyer and seller in a transaction. While it may seem ideal from an agent's perspective, it can lead to some significant risks, which is why it is illegal in eight states. In most states. Though dual agency is legal, but state laws have measures in place to protect parties that use it. Still, even in states where it is illegal, it is not classified as an antitrust violation. While all the other examples are. Question seven: A seller tells the listing agent that her home was cheated for termites five years ago, and that there are no termites now. Before listing the property, the agent should: a. Tell the seller not to disclose the information since it's been past two years. b. Tell the seller not to disclose the information since it's been past four years. c. Tell the seller to disclose the termite treatment on the property disclosure. D. Contact the zoning department for local termite laws and ordinance. Answer C. The agent should tell the seller to disclose the termite treatment on the property disclosure. Whether legally required or not, depending on which state you live in, you should always tell the seller to disclose to mind damage, regardless of the legality. Letting buyers know about past issues upfront protects anyone from a lawsuit down the line. Even with an as-is sale, you need to disclose any known to mind damage on the property. Question eight: Upon payment and delivery of the deed, the seller should also deliver what can be quite complex or quite simple, depending on the type of real estate transaction. A. A lead paint disclosure form. B. The package options. C. The bill of sale. D. The mortgage. Answer C. Similar to a receipt, a bill of sale is a written instrument that attests to a buyer's purchase of property from a seller. Question nine: The Civil Rights Act of 1866 prohibits discrimination in real estate based on a race, b gender, c religion. D. Race and gender. Answer A. Why discrimination of race, gender, and religion are all illegal today? Back then, the specific law that extended equal rights in real property to members of all races was the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Question ten: What is the last requirement in the process of offer and acceptance that creates an executory contract? A. Offer. B. Agreement. C. Acceptance. D. Communication of acceptance. Answer D. 
communication of acceptance because once acceptance is communicated to the offeree, an executory contract is formed. Acceptance with communication does not create a contract. All parties must sign the offer to create a valid contract. Question eleven: A property's market value is four hundred thousand dollars. The assessment rate for the house is twenty-five percent, with twenty-two point seventy-five mills and a twenty-five thousand dollars property tax deduction. Find the annual property taxes. A. Four hundred twenty-six point fifty-six dollars. B. One thousand seven hundred and six point twenty-five dollars. C. Two thousand one hundred thirty-two point eighty-one dollars. D. Two thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars. Answer B. In this problem, we have to find the annual property taxes. First off, we have to find the assessed value. In order to do that, we have to take the market value, which is four hundred thousand dollars, and then multiply it by the assessment rate, which is twenty-five percent. So, four hundred thousand dollars multiplied twenty-five. Equal one hundred thousand dollars. Now that we the assessed value, we must subtract the deductions. So one hundred thousand dollars plus twenty-five thousand dollars equal seventy-five thousand dollars. The next step is to utilize meals. The meal rate is the amount of tax payable per dollar of the assessed value of a property. So we have to multiply the assessed value by the mill rate, which is seventy-five thousand dollars multiplied zero two to seventy-five, equal one thousand seven hundred and six point twenty-five dollar. So the annual property taxes on the property is one thousand seven hundred and six point twenty-five dollars. Question twelve: Under what situation, if any, may a lender consider age when making a lending decision? A. Never. B. If the applicant's income might drop due to retirement. C. If the applicant's source of income is through any form of public assistance. D. Discount or refuse to consider income because it comes from part-time employment, social security, pensions, or annuities. Answer B. A creditor can consider age. If it's used to determine the meaning of other factors important to credit worthiness, for example, a creditor could use your age to determine if your income might drop because you're about to retire. A creditor cannot consider age in any of the other situations listed. Question thirteen: The best way to determine fair value. A divisional contractors. B. Twenty-eight per thirty-six rule. C. Appraisal. D. Gross rent multiplier. Answer C. Appraisals are the best way to determine fair value. The overall appraisal process is based on a number of factors, such as its cost, the income it generates, or its fair market value as compared to similar assessed. Question fourteen: The deed that offers the grantee the most protection. 
With this type of deed, the grantor makes a series of legally binding promises called covenants and warranties to the grantee, agreeing to protect the grantee against any prior claims and demands of all persons whomsoever in regards to the conveyed land. A general warranty deed. B special warranty deed. C quit claim deed. D. Trustee deed. Answer A. The general warranty deed offers the grantee the most protection. General warranty deeds protect homeowners from stakes and claims from previous people from the beginning of time to right now. It also protects homeowners from any potential encumbrances. A general warranty deed grants an undeniable fact that this property is coming with no liens and no heirs that they could potentially lay claim to the piece of property. Question fifteen: What is Ginny May's primary responsibility? A. To create. FHA and VA loans. B. To guarantee the security of loans. C. To maintain an active secondary market for mortgage. D. To manage and liquidate previously acquired mortgage. Answer B. Genie may exist to solely guarantee the security of the loan. Genie may is a government agency that guarantees securities backed by loans issued under other government agency programs, such as the VA and FHA. Fannie Mae is a private corporation that buys loans from private lenders, assembles them into mortgage-backed securities to maintain an active secondary market. Question sixteen: Which of the following fiduciary duties continues after a listing agreement expires? A. Loyalty. B. Disclosure. C. Confidentiality. D. Reasonable care and diligence. Answer C. The fiduciary duty of confidentiality lasts forever. Confidentiality requires that you do not disclose any information learned about your clients, their business, financial or personal affairs or motivations. Again, this duty lasts forever. Question seventeen: What is the difference between the market value of your home and the amount you owe the lender who holds the mortgage? A. Appreciation. B. Variance. C. Proration. D. Equity. Answer D. The term is used very often in real estate. Equity is the difference between the market value of your home and the amount you owe the lender who holds the mortgage. Your equity is the money you'd received after paying off the mortgage if you were to sell the home. A man named Troy lives in California, but owns property across the U.S. He owns property in cities like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and D.C. Troy decides he wants to sell his property in D.C. Instead of traveling all the way to D.C. to complete all the paperwork, he calls up his buddy Tony. Troy authorizes Tony, who lives in D.C., to sell his property for him. Troy gives Tony a n a fee David. Attorney, in fact, promissory note, power of attorney.
Answer D. The legal document that authorizes someone to act on behalf of another person in business or for some sort of business transaction is a power of attorney. An attorney, in fact, is someone authorized to act on behalf of another person. The legal document that authorizes that person is called a power of attorney. Question nineteen. Buyer Dan is considering buying a lot to build a single-family residence. Dan hires an appraiser to appraise the lot. Which approach to value would the appraiser choose to complete the task? A. Cost approach. B. Estate approach. C. Income approach or summation. D. Market data approach or sales comparison approach. Answer D. The market data approach is also commonly called the sales comparison approach. The cost approach is also referred to as summation, and lastly, the income approach is also known as capitalization. Each method has its own set of benefits. The answer is the market data approach or sales comparison approach because it's a single-family residence. Question twenty: What is the proper procedure for changing a contract that already has become binding? A. Sign a separate amendment. B. Replace the old contract with a new one. C. Write the changes in the original contract. D. Write the changes in the original contract date and initial the changes. Answer A. The proper procedure for changing a contract that has already become binding is to sign a separate amendment. Remember, separate amendments are used to modify or change executory contracts. Question twenty one. Which of the following would be an example of a deed restriction? A. Loan type. B. Tax rate. C. House color. D. Closing date time frame. Answer C. Deed restrictions are limitations to the use of the property imposed by a past or current owner and are usually legally binded forever. Some common examples of deed restrictions are. Type and number of trees you can remove from the property, house color, window signs, overall style, color, and construction materials used in renovation. Question twenty-two: Which type of property would an appraiser use a DAF table to estimate the property value? A. Government-owned property. B. Commercial property. C. Special use property. D. Residential property. Answer B. A DAF table is used to estimate the value of commercial properties. A DAF table is a table used by real estate appraisers to show land values in percentages based on variations in the DAF of the lot. Question twenty-three. Typically, a trust is a dot 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 party relationship. A one. B two. C three D four. Answer C. Trust can be created during an individual's lifetime, or they can be established following someone's death. A trust is a three-party relationship in which the first party, the truster or settler, transfer 
a property upon the second party for the benefit of the third party, the beneficiary, the trustee is required to manage the trust property in accordance with the trustor's wishes and in the beneficiary's best interest. A trustee can be an individual or a financial institution, such as a bank. Question twenty four. Which of the following contracts would best be described as a contract in which only one party makes a promise to perform an action? A. Implied contract. B. Bilateral contract. C. Unilateral contract. D. Implied in fact contract. Answer C. A unilateral contract is a contract in which only one party makes a promise to perform an action. An insurance contract or a reward contract are both examples of unilateral contracts. Unilateral contracts appear more often than you may think. One of the most common instances is a reward contract. Imagine you've lost your cat, Coco. You place an advertisement online offering a two hundred and fifty dollars reward to the person who returns Coco. By providing a reward, you're offering a unilateral contract. Question twenty five. By which of the following can you not lose title to your property involuntarily? A. Adverse possession. B. Foreclosure. C. Dedication. D. Evasion. Answer C. Dedication in property law means the donation of your land. Dedication would be considered voluntary, while the others are all involuntarily.